This is Sam Katz with Gallery Glass, and I'm here at Storefront Tenike for the exhibition opening of Material. Liz Dimmitt, we're here for our Material. Can you tell me a little bit about the show? Well, it's a show that I sort of started thinking of earlier in the spring and was really interested in the concept of consumption and repurposing materials. And there were three artists that are in it that I've been following for quite some time, so it just sort of worked as it came together. And um, it's Judith Hopkins, Katie Bell, and Jessica Siegel. Uh, we're standing next to our Katie Bell right now. This is a work that is really um, about interior design and home building, and it's all made with sort of building supplies and materials, sort of repurposed and put together in this, I would say, wall painting. And where I got to know Katie through a friend who was following her work in the studio, and I'm thrilled to have a chance to bring something to life. It's a site-specific installation for this show. Can you show me some of the other work as well? Sure. This is a piece by Judith Hoffman. It's called After Sears, and it's basically two kit houses from the Sears and Roebuck catalog um, that she built out of wood and, of course, has inverted one. In this piece, I just think is incredible to the detail and then the actual construction. I love the idea of the raw materials, thinking about sort of the American dream, um, and really sort of juxtaposing those ideas together. Obviously, the, the two pieces that we've just seen are very large in scale. Did you do that intentionally, or did you also choose some smaller work that we can? You know, I really wanted to accent this space. Deborah Brown is so you know great to have this space here in Brooklyn, and this is her new gallery, and it's such a wonderful, huge space. But I wanted works to highlight. Yes, I wanted to ask you about that, actually, since you brought it up. This is a very reclaimed, natural-looking space. It's, it's really one of a kind, especially for Bushwick. Did you choose this space specifically for the show, or did it just come to be? Together. I had the idea of consumption and thinking about resource privilege for a show that I've been sort of ruminating for a while, and then when Debbie asked me to do a show here for the fall, I mean, I knew it was the perfect spot, and I was excited to get to have work of the scale that I'd sort of been envisioning. I mean, usually I'm working with smaller galleries and in smaller spaces, so I can't really have site specific huge installations. So this was just sort of a great opportunity to really bring things to life. Great. So these are drawings by Jessica Siegel, and they're actually drawings of solar panels. And she spent time in Mongolia doing some art projects, and in Mongolia it's completely off the grid, so almost everyone is using solar panels. And she basically did these portraits of solar panels, which I just think are just so beautiful, and I love the sort of humor of making solar panels out of graphite on paper. They're very interpretive. We'll speak with the artist momentarily, but can you tell me a little bit more about the meaning behind these pieces? Well, I mean, I think she's talking about resource privilege, being off the grid, survival, um, how other, I would say, other places, you know, have limited resources, and I think there's a lot of humor. And then also there, she considers them abstractions, so she calls them abstractions, solar panel abstractions. So they are just these beautiful patterns, and I think it's interesting that each solar, you know, she saw all these solar panels and realized that they had different patterns and different, basically, compositions, and she got sort of very interested in sort of drawing that. Great. So these are two different pieces by Katie Bell, who again is taking sort of repurposed building materials. This is actually, I think, a piece of a hot tub repurposed and put together for this floor sculpture. And um, I just sort of love the compositions that she's coming up with by sort of finding objects and retooling them and putting them together. I, I think it's very interesting that beyond the, you know, geometric um, flexibility here, we're also looking at really hard, unique materials. Uh, I, I genuinely hope the, the Google Glasses can capture the diversity here between the wood and the, the marble and the metal. There's some really... And, you know, for these, this is, you know, actually a piece of plastic with a faux marble finish. So I think that oh, sort of even that's... makes it more interesting because it's sort yes. of fake material with a faux finish that sort of talks a lot about consumption and how we sort of all want to you know, resource privilege comes into play there, too. You know, marble is the thing that everyone aspires to, but this is plastic with a you know, marble finish. Right, it really puts it in perspective. Mm -hmm. And this piece, I think, is just so perfect for the space. I love how she's taken the low bump and put it over a big looking rafter, and the sort of balance of, you know, the heavy wood and the stone on the bottom with, you know, basically a cloth, you know, on the other end. 
These are both Katie Bell. Yes. Let's continue. These are four individual works by Katie Bell, and they're actually sort of tablets, um, wall hanging paintings. It involves sort of mixed media and collaging different materials together. And I love this one on the floor. May I touch just to see what the material is? So what is this that we're Katie will have to tell you exactly, but I believe it's just literally like plaster built up. Great. Mm -hmm. I know, it's unbelievable. There's a lot going on in this. It really is really, you know. So I could, I'll let you lead the way. This whole room is an installation by Jessica Siegel, and it's a video projection on a screen that is actually literally frozen. So she's taken the engine of a refrigerator and repurposed it so that the screen itself is freezing. And it is very apropos for the video, which is actually her filming in the Arctic. She can talk more about the piece, but she did a trip up to the Arctic and wear a special dress that has solar panels on it and then was projecting and filming in the Arctic, of course, on the ice up there. So this piece is sort of a reinterpretation of that experience. And then she has these old refrigerators, each that are sort of lit, and they actually have sound if you get close to them. Um, uh, and, you know, it really is, you know, domestic goods and talking about uh, life cycle and these things that, you know, make our lives easier, but are really here forever once we have them. So this is um, based on the Sears kit houses, which for those of you who don't know, um, the Sears kit started selling houses in the early 1900s for, and this house in particular today would go equivalent to about $11,000. But this is where the first kind of image that we have of the American home begins. Um, and because it was inexpensive, it was it was open to, to farmers and people who otherwise wouldn't have a home. But it came in a shipping container, like we receive flat packs, like we receive IKEA goods with every, you know, every nail hole, everything marked and laid. So you had to pay um, for um, a contractor to pour a foundation for you, and you could build it yourself. And um, they used a hardwood uh, oak. So the bottom house here is an oak, and then and it's built stick frame style, which is how we build our houses now. We build them with the cheapest wood possible, most of the time the soft grade pine. And, you know, I wanted to kind of, they're, they're in this way to sort of look at these two different structures. Um, so this is a birch and pine on top, and it's oak. Uh, and but both built stick frame, though. Both did be in dialogue with where we are with the idea of the American home and, and what uh, kind of, and hopefully, I mean, I hope, I hope there's also a sort of sense of upheaval in relationship to it, but who knows? How long did this take you to build? Um, it, it total, well, it was broken up over a while because I, I was on working on other stuff, but if you put all the time together, uh, it's about two months. Now, do you I work a job too? So maybe you know. <laughs> do you always work with architectural um, exploration pieces? I my work deals with the sort of relationship between sanctuary and decay. That's definitely a theme in my work. So I'm I'm really interested in you know creating structures that look at safe spaces and then how those break down and the idea of ephemerality it, uh, when we are at home and so I mean. I, Less, I mean, yes, my work is in is in dialogue, some of it, quite heavily with architecture, but more as architecture represents sanctuary. Well, speaking of, you have another piece here that I think yes. speaks to that yes, very yes. clearly. Can yeah. we take a look? Sure, sure. This piece is uh, called In Hoping We Find Ourselves. Yeah. And it was, um, I was asked to come to Detroit, sorry, uh, to go to Detroit, and I had... Um, made a piece earlier in Nebraska um, that they wanted me to basically replicate where I had built a, I had made a paper slip cover for a building in Nebraska. And I asked all the residents in Nebraska that as the work decayed to take the paper and use it to start fires because there were, it was sort of a, a, a poorer population there. But in Detroit, I took the opportunity because they wanted a slip cover. I was less interested in making the object than in documenting its decay. So this um, was shot over uh, the six-week, 
I took photos every five minutes on a time lapse and put them into a time lapse for six weeks. But at about two and a half, three weeks, a janitor from a nearby building came and took the sculpture down uh, because he was tired of looking at what he thought was trash at that point. Uh, which to me was sort of a beautiful and perfect way to end things because in Detroit, you know, you really, when where people are, they care very much about it. But, you know, the thing about Detroit is that there are so many places that are abandoned and, I mean, blocked off by the city. And, and that's the reputation that it gets. There's, a, you know, there's a, a term for, I, you know, in the art world called ruin porn that's very specific to Detroit. So, um, and I, uh, so this is, this is, both of these pieces, this is the first time they're being shown, but I wanted to show them together.